H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z. Do you know your A B C of how to tell a story? Tell me more. Tell me now. If you don't know, then let me tell you how. Hi, this is Ritu Parna Ghosh, and you're watching A B C of storytelling, where every week I share tips, tricks, techniques, and secrets from my story bag. This week we are on the letter U, and like always, we have quite a few U's for you. So let's get started. The first U that we have is U for understand. Well, when it comes to storytelling, understanding what your audience is understanding of your story is very, very critical. But how do you do that without really asking questions? In the middle of a story, while you are telling a story, how do you know whether your audience is understanding the story in the first place or not? Well, here is here is what we do. Um, a lot of times, I've been invited to schools to tell story in one particular language, and uh, when I get there, I usually have a little conversation with my audience to ask them what language would they like me to tell a story in. Um, so sometimes they tell me that they would like it in English or they would like it in Hindi, and sometimes they all they very well say that please make it bilingual. Um, that's a good way to know what your audience is expecting or what they are most comfortable in. But sometimes, if the school is expecting you to speak in only one language, and if I have started telling the story in that language, I can judge and assess by my audience's body language, by their glances, uh, by their uh, shifty nature, whether they are looking here and there, or even that puzzled look in their eyes, where they're trying very hard to follow every word that I'm saying, so that they can comprehend the story as it happens. And sometimes that really gives it out. I know that they are working very hard to understand the story to understand the language and mind you i use very simple language in my stories i don't use a language which you need to open a dictionary for because storytelling is all about conversational language so uh, even then i under i sometimes see that in their faces when they really don't understand it so i switch i switch and i use two languages or i choose uh, another language which i think they will understand better and then I went go and apologize to the school, and I said, "I'm sorry, but uh, I could see it in the, on their faces. I do not; they do not understand uh, what I'm trying to tell. And what's the use of listening to a story if you don't understand what you're listening to? Um, so that's very important. Watch your audience while you're telling a story. Your questions at the end of the story will tell you whether uh, they have really." Um, soaked in the story, they've understood it, uh, whether they're ready to answer questions based on it. But sometimes that that's too late, that's after the story is over. While in the middle of a story, you can uh, always look at your audience very closely. And really, that's what storytelling is all about. When you're telling a story, you're not so wrapped or uh, engrossed in the whole exercise of telling that you do not really look at your listener, that you do not judge or assess your listener and their proactive behavior, whether they are listening to you at all or not. So their understanding, the audience's understanding level is very, very important. Um, so that's about understanding your audience, whether they are understanding your story or not. The next you that we have for you is you for use. And uh, when it comes to use, uh, it's all about using aids. What aids are you using in your story to highlight your storytelling experience uh, for your audience? Uh, remember, a prop design, set design is a very integral part of storytelling, at least uh, when it comes to uh, storytelling for young children uh, and even for the middle group. So whether it's puppetry, are you going to use puppets to tell a story? And no, puppets are not just for the young ones. Puppets are for all age groups and their uh, puppetry in itself is a, is a huge field of storytelling. So you may want to integrate oral as well as puppetry um, to uh, tell a story. Um, at the same time, you may want to use uh, different props. It could be props uh, which you pull out from your bag. Uh, it, they, they could be related objects in your story. Or these could be props which are uh, used on the different parts of your stage in your classroom where you can use them while your story is being told. For example, if it is about a stick, then maybe somewhere uh, in your classroom you've hidden a stick to be used. Um, as a prop at the right time in the story without really showing the prop in the beginning that look here that I have to use this at some point. Musical aids are another accompaniment that you could use uh, in the story. So you could pick up a little drum, play a little beat. Um, of course, having a musician play a drum 
uh, play a beat or playing a violin or any other instrument is of course a great accompaniment when you're doing storytelling so have uh, your storytelling with some live music music going on so that's beautiful um, using um, let's say a costume now that's another thing that's very important um, in your story you may want to dress up as the whole character uh, to tell the story in the first person narrative um, again it's a wonderful technique that children love uh, maybe it could all, all be about drawing a moustache or trying a turban or wearing a dhoti or wearing a sari in a particular way or it could be about uh, a character that you have uh, or, or it could be a character that you've read from another culture so maybe dressing up as that character is also a wonderful way to engage your audience you could also use audio visual in storytelling audio visual is the use of a, a specially crafted piece of music as well as uh, projecting some visuals on the people on, on the background while you're telling a story live. I tend uh, to not use audiovisual a lot because I think I'm pretty animated myself but I've used it once and that was uh, for when I was working with some little children and I was using uh, to I was using visuals because I wanted to really talk about a very specific thing which I know they've never seen so therefore uh, when that element is important in my story I had to use uh, source pictures put them into a beautiful little film and while the film was playing I was telling the story live for uh, the children out there now uh, there are lots of storytellers out there who use audiovisual very beautifully so you could watch some of those videos online and try and use them in your story if they are required but I feel that audiovisuals um, are a great accompaniment to live storytelling and it is about how you balance the two so go ahead and use props puppets go ahead and use musical aids go ahead and use costume in your story or even audio visual to enhance the listening experience of your audience while you're telling a story other use of use that i want to talk about is using stories as a parent as a teacher and as a storyteller think about the ways you're going to use stories and storytelling with children are you going to use stories as a parenting tool are you going to use stories as a teaching tool as you go, are you going to use stories to really, really work with your audience in creating beautiful experiences for them? Use of stories is one of the oldest ways to connect, to communicate, and to convince. The use of stories goes a long way in creating a willing learner. The use of stories goes a long way in creating a learner who is involved in self-learning. The use of stories goes a long way in raising a child who would naturally love stories words and narrative so what are you doing about it i hope you enjoy the tips of this week and you're going to be back next week for the next letter uh, keep writing keep writing your comments sharing your feedback sharing your questions we love to hear from you so until next week happy storytelling